whether it was a smart decision or not, I'm still deciding. We can go to the Holly. We took Terrence Roberts to the Holly. So here come the bloods right now. To the exact spot so, in Northeast um, Park Hill, yeah. where the anti-gang activist shot and paralyzed a man in 2013. Can we talk on camera? Keep it rolling, because this would be some good footage for them. I don't have nothing to hide. What happens next is truly eight years in the making. Because I, I, I defended nobody, myself. No, you shot that dude. That's what you did. I defended and myself. P, why are you harassing me, you P? Don't want none of this. Why are you harassing you me, Pernell? Why? Listen, you homie. Me, get out my face, bro. Get, get out my face, homie. Y'all ain't kids. You, your mama's a bitch. What's up? Wait, 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 wait. What's up? Stop, stop. Stop. But first, to understand the truth. All that. It was all a lie. And the intensity of this confrontation. Get out of my face, young man. You have to know his story. Whether you choose to believe it is your choice. I never want to be a gangster. My life just unfolded that way. One thing led to another. 45-year-old Terrence Roberts went from gangster yes, sir. to reformer to you decide. I was selling crack. I was selling drugs. I was a runaway. I was 18 with $30,000 in cash. In the 80s, it wasn't just crack cocaine that migrated east from South Central LA. The infamous gangs donning blue and red came too. It landed here. One of the first places it landed was in Northeast Denver, first on the five points with the Crips. In the 90s, the corner of Northeast Park Hill, known as the Holly, became the hub of the community and Blood's activity. If you were not as good in basketball as Chauncey Billups, if you were not going to the NFL, you either better be very, very intelligent, like a super intelligent kid that's going to Harvard, or you're gonna have to fall in line, you're gonna have to fight. It was a movement. Gang violence became a movement. Terrence spent ages 14 to 26 gangbanging, AKA committing criminal activity for the Bloods, spending a total of 10 years in prison. I haven't been arrested like 50 times, but I've been arrested quite a few um, for like weapons cases, fighting, gang violence, shootings, whatever. While serving time for a weapons charge in 2004, Terrence began reading the teachings of MLK, Malcolm X, and Jesus Christ. And the same way I fell in love with gangster rap and wanted to be a blood in 89 and 90, I, I, I started falling in love with, I couldn't wait to get locked in my cell so I could read the Bible. Terrence, when he came out of the joint, for example, you know, he was true. He really had this, this, this burning fire to make a difference. With 39 years in the anti-violence game. And that was in the early 80s. Reverend Leon Kelly, creator of Open Door Youth Gang Alternatives, was a mentor of Terrence's. I was a young man fresh out of prison, trying to learn how to be an organizer, wanting to be a revolutionary. And these were just babies just saying, we don't want to be Crips and Bloods. It went from 11 kids to 30 kids. And next thing you know, I have 60 kids stuffed in the classroom. Let's get going, let's clean it up. Terrence's camo movement, asking gangs to forego the red and blue in favor of unifying camouflage, received praise from the mayor, the governor, and quite a few fat-pocketed donors. This is showing our youth that you don't have to join a street gang to represent your community. Terrence was an unstoppable force. We start with a developing story in the North Park Hill neighborhood. Police tell us that one adult male shot another adult male. 39-year-old Terrence Roberts claimed self-defense when he shot Hassan Jones, who survived but is now paralyzed. Current gang members don't always love the moves and message of the reformed. Tension turned to bloodshed at Terrence's own peace rally. I had been beefing with Hassan all that day. 23-year-old blood Hassan Jones was among the crowd that started gathering for Terrence's rally that Friday evening in September 2013. And I asked him, like, you gonna, you gonna F me up? He's like, yeah, we'll be over there in a minute on Bloods. And so when he said that, I had my gun in my truck. He was like, let's get them. And they tried to collapse on me. And that's when I up my pistol when I and I shot in their direction to defend myself. Two of five bullets paralyzed Hassan and Terrence found himself facing a life sentence. I didn't think they were going to attack me at my priest rally. I was carrying my gun though because they were threatening me and leaving notes, leaving knives. Ultimately, a jury believed Terrence did act in self-defense. Despite acquittal, Eight years later, he's still answering for those five shots. Can we talk after you get done talking to him? About what? 
We weren't the only ones who had questions for Terrence when we took a stroll back through his old neighborhood. These men are also former Bloods who believe Hassan's shooting was premeditated. And the reason why you got off and nobody coming to testify you know, is because of the same guys you talk bad about. The reason why didn't nobody all them you shot Why they try to jump me? Didn't nobody come testify Why did they try to you jump me, P. Lee? They, they, they did try to jump me. It's on camera. National Geographic it's on that camera. Why'd you get caught trying to plant a knife? Because they put the knife right no, there. No, they, okay. You gonna let me talk? Okay. You gonna let me talk, brother? It was 60 bloods. Ain't nobody, come on, homie. This man was- At his right shop. Here, you're lying. It's on camera. You're lying. You're lying. How did I get acquitted? Stay on my face, bro. No one got hurt this day. It's I'm gonna de-escalate this, it's real. It's and, and I'm gonna not, leave, guys, okay? Real. Although there wasn't much resolution either. As it was with Terrence, you know, he was a work still in process. But when you think that you're, you are, have become so mighty, and so engulfed in, oh, I'm, uh, look at what I've done, this is what I'm doing, this is who I am, this is, you know, you can't tell me nothing. That becomes an issue. Terrence sowed good seeds, and I ain't seen no blood, no crip do what Terrence has done. The bad guys don't always win, guys. This is a neighborhood still divided on what really went down that fateful night and what really caused the rise and fall of the hood's hero. That's who I am, man. I want to be a revolutionary. That's what I care about. I care about doing things for my people. And yes, there, there are some negative things attached to my life, but since that time, my intentions have been to just help my people the best I can. Terrence has found some normalcy despite the level of tension he still faces in the community, as you just saw. Uh, he works as a home inspector and still uses his free time to fight injustice. Terrence founded the nonprofit, the Frontline Party for Revolutionary Action, and he has held protests on behalf of Elisha McLean and Alexis Mendez Perez, who both died at the hands of Aurora Police. So he's still fighting that fight for mm -hmm. his people, as he calls it. And, and it's interesting the way that that those movements were kind of at the center of the conversation in the community over the last summer and whether people knew it or not that this guy who was very prominent in the community years ago was right in the middle of it again. Absolutely. And he was arrested, you know, and he beat those charges over the summer. But I mean, he was somebody who was very prevalent, bringing the name of Elijah McClain to the masses. And, you know, he's still doing that work. And it's just so interesting to, to kind of feel that tension. And some people love him. Some people don't. Very yeah. polarizing person. But he is still in the community. And that that's something that we've seen. To understand our present, we have to understand the past. Absolutely. And too many people in Denver, some, some brand new in recent years, don't know the history. And I hope just seeing the story, maybe it um, lends people to digging a little deeper. The fascinating story of Northeast Park Hill, how it started mm -hmm. in the civil rights, even bringing the gangs and how that's kind of shaped this neighborhood. Uh, fascinating people. They deserve to have their stories told. And maybe, you know, people who are watching this will dig a little deeper. For sure. That's right. All right. Thank you. Thanks.